I don't believe it, muttered Gordon furiously. What's Thomas got that an important engine like me hasn't? Tell me that. Gallivanting off to museums. Bah! He is old, said James. If the fat controller says he can be a museum piece, why should we worry? It's not fair, though, grumbled Henry. For a chance like this, he wouldn't have minded being a museum piece himself. The jealous engines all ignored Thomas when they saw him at the junction. Thomas didn't care. He was too excited. Why me? Thomas asked Percy and Toby. Fancy the National Railway Museum people at, where is it, York, wanting me to go there? They've never even seen me. Yes, they have, said Percy. On television, added Toby. The fat controller told us about it. He and Percy wanted to go with Thomas, but they knew that someone had to stay and run the branch line while he was away. How much longer till we go? Thomas asked his driver every morning. One day less than when you asked before, laughed his driver. Anyone would think you wanted to be a museum piece. Thomas grinned. Gordon, Henry and James are just jealous, he chuckled. Who else is at this museum? Is Flying Scotsman there, or Duck's friend, City of Truro? We shall have to wait and see, said the fireman. I'll be very surprised if there isn't someone there that you can remember from the old days. And that, of course, made Thomas more excited than ever. At last the day came. A large crowd came to the junction to see Thomas off, and the fat controller was there too. Goodbye, Thomas, he said. Enjoy yourself and be a credit to our railway. Everyone gave three cheers and Thomas set off. They ran across the island and over the bridge leading to the other railway. It was a slow journey, but at last they reached a place Thomas's driver called Carnforth, where they rested for the night in a big shed. Next day they went on. At Skipton, Thomas stopped for a drink and to let a goods train overtake him. While they waited, it began to rain. In a signal box a little way ahead, the signalman opened his level crossing gates for Thomas and set his signals to clear. Suddenly he heard a crack and then a rattle from the level crossing. The lock on a gate had broken and the wind was swinging the gate across the rails. Steam appeared above the trees as Thomas drew near. Wow! exclaimed the signalman, and quickly resetting the signal to danger, he ran to mend the gate. Thomas had never felt happier. His fire was bright, and even the rain didn't depress him. They neared a signal. Its arm was up, showing that the line ahead was clear. Away we go! Away we go! puffed Thomas happily. He was just passing the signal when he heard a clang as the signal arm fell to danger. Whoa, Thomas, cried the driver, and put the brakes hard on. What? Thomas began. But then he saw, just in front, a heavy level crossing gate swinging towards him across the line. The signalman tried to stop it, but the gate was wet, and it slipped from his hand. Oh, ah, groaned Thomas as he skidded along the rails. Help! I must stop! But the rain had made the rails slippery, and he couldn't. He slithered helplessly. He was still moving when he reached the level crossing. With a loud crack, the gate broke against his buffer beam. Ouch! said Thomas, and stopped. The signalman ran to his telephone, and then directed Thomas into a siding, where an inspector examined him. His buffer beam was bent, and one of his buffers was broken. You can't go on like that, said the inspector. Not on the railway, anyhow. But I'm supposed to be in York tomorrow, wailed Thomas. I know that, said the inspector. Never mind. Leave it to me, and I'll see what can be done. And with that, Thomas had to be content.